And then we are going to look at the phase diagram. So we know that the s dot equal to zero line has two possibilities. One is that it is downward sloping and the other is that it is upward sloping depending on the value of its slope. So starting with the s dot equal to zero line, if we increase um, p by a little bit, then from the first equation, we can see that with higher p, s dot equal to zero is going to be larger than one, sorry, larger than zero. So s dot is going to be larger than zero, and that means s is going to increase. So to the right of s dot equal to zero, we go to the right, uh, and to the left, we go to the left. So we then focus our attention on the p dot equal to zero line, and we can see that if we increase s by a little bit by going to the right, uh, then we can see that p dot is going to increase. So to the right of p dot equal to zero, then p dot is going to increase to the left of p dot equal to zero, p dot is going to decrease. So that gives the two um, saddle paths here. And then we get our diagram. So what we are going to do next is going to consider a sudden increase in m. So um, m is permanently higher. So the first step we are going to take is to analyze what is going to happen to the um, steady state. So the effect that is that S is going to increase due to an increase in K, and P is going to increase due to an increase in K. And the second step is that uh, what happens to the two um, uh, lines here. So if we um, focus on the S bar equal zero and P dot equal to zero line, uh, we can see that the effect of m increasing is going to move the uh, s dot equal to zero line but not the p dot equal to zero line because both p bar and s bar are going to change so if the line is s dot equal to zero line is downward sloping then it should shift right but uh, if the line is upward sloping then it should shift right also so in the first case, um, we have our new set of path, and then in the second case, we've got our new set of path. So in the first case, we are going to get um, exchange rate overshooting. And why is that? So when M increases, that will also increase um, S, and then if people are expecting a depreciation, then the depreciation should happen right now. And that is going to affect the goods market. Um, so if Y is going to increase due to an sorry, depreciation, then uh, it also has some spillover effect to the money market, which is the first equation. So when um, delta ky is very small or equal to zero, then if an increase in m is going to cause a, a decrease in i, and this means less domestic demand, sorry, dem demand for domestic currency, and then there will be a further depreciation. So there is an overshooting. To check, we can focus our attention to the third equation. Uh, so if we have a lower i on the left-hand side, then that must be accompanied by a in decrease in s on the right-hand side. 
But if we have instead, sorry, that um, ky is bigger than 1, then if we have an increase in m, then that translates to an increase in ky. Uh, and in fact, if it is too big, so it needs a increase in i to counter this effect. So that leads to a less demand, sorry, more demand for domestic currency and a appreciation, which is a decrease in s. And more we can see this from the third equation. So if we have that i is larger than i star, then that means um, a, um, a pre sorry, um, depreciation uh, further. So, um, yeah, so we need a, uh, so we need the s to be larger than zero 